My name is Dylan Gott. I'm fucking infuriated that the song was ruined by my co-host, John Hastings. I am John Hastings. I improved the song. Hit me up uh, for my new podcast, Dylan Gott Has No Podcast, starting right now in my pants. <laughs> Ooh, Dylan Gott Has No Podcast. I get there's a there's probably a lot of those like that are the name of the comedian and then this person does not have a podcast. I bet you there is, and I bet you the f- I bet you every third person who thought of it went, I fucking did it. Dude, all right. This is going to be, okay, so this is going to be an episode that relies highly on us bullshitting because I... Not a problem. I had no idea this guy was a real thing. I thought it was just a meme and then something mocked on billions. Mm. This is fucking crazy. All right, so basically... There's a man, grew up in Turkey, very modest, becomes a butcher. I think they call it cutting your knives where you basically go places. <clears throat> he traveled all over and... I hope they don't call it cutting your knives. Cut his I knives hope. or something? But anyway, he worked places, a teeth? bunch of places for free. He did stages is what they're called. Experience. Yeah, stodging. He was stodging as a butcher. But what he would do is his specialty is like uh coming out you were familiar with like fine dining restaurants they have a fucking waiter put on a little fucking show because your steak was six thousand dollars before we continue dylan what do you feel about that waiter show here's my opinion i love it when they make a salad anything else do it in the back get in the back pierre i don't think i've ever done that i mean i went to the most ballin fucking thing i think i've ever bought was my wife and i got a four hundred dollar lunch in montreal an expensive restaurant but they weren't like, no. here's the coffee. It's out of my asshole. They were just like, here's your coffee slowly. Do you need anything else? Everything. You're basically, uh, we, you're eating very nice food that is essentially cooked in your body weight and butter. And we were like, that's, yes. That's yeah, you went to an actually like a really classy French restaurant where they were like, hello? Uh, everything is beef cooked in butter inside of the fat of other butter. And you're like, whoa. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I'll pay 400 bucks for that. And you're like, listen, you're going to feel so good for an hour, and then you are going to take a shit that you're going to be like, I think something left me that was spiritual. Dude. And then you're going to be a bit drunk, and then you're going to ride that out, and then you're going to feel fucking great, buddy. I was at the keg. Oh, yeah. Eight Such shits a Canadian. in two days. Eight shits? That's real good. I'm in a bit of a health kick losing some weight. I Woke chunked. up middle of the night. Had to piss. Nope. Had to shit. Oh, it's the best. Started to piss, realized this is, there's shit hadn't happened to me. Like it was like a steady stream. It was actually, I guess, I guess maybe it was not even the food was bad. Maybe the food was, uh, maybe the, the meat should have, I should have gotten food poisoning, but because of the quality of the service, it was slow roll and I could live my life over two days. Here's the thing. I, uh, I'm in the middle of cutting some weight, chunked up a little oh, bit. Yeah. And here's the thing they don't ever tell you about being healthy is when you reach that stage where you're like, you're still around the same weight, but your bowels really started to kick up. So you're just, mm-hmm. I did, I did six, six shits yesterday. Each one more intense. Yeah. If you have that much fiber and your body's like used to uh, new food, old, cool food, like ruffles yeah, and then you exactly. have truffles. And uh, what is it? Oh, it's, it's so satisfying when you turn because you go from the hard to the softs and then you're just like, oh, we're in. You know what I was thinking? If I was going to dump a bunch of weight again, measure I'd measure myself. I wouldn't do the weight. I would literally, me- I would just be like, here's how big my waist is. Here's how big my arms are. And just measure them all down because weight does, wh- the scale does lie, John. And what's also so infuriating is I've, I like, I'm like the second heaviest I've ever been in my life. And I've also never been in Whoa. better shape in my entire life, which is the, like the, like we body 40. dysmorphic. You know what I mean? Like it's the most, it's, yeah, it's pushing 40 where it's literally like I can run for three hours straight and I look like I just eat sandwiches and sit down. And so I'm like, the fuck, man, I, here's the thing with being in your 20s. So if you're not smoking cigarettes and drinking and then still having a rock hard, cool body, you're a fucking asshole. If you're going to the gym, and by the way, I'll be <laughs> speaking to my brother when I see him at Thanksgiving about his healthy behavior in his early 20s. It is time to have a goddamn premium alcoholic beverage. None of these white, I know he's having white claws and I know he listens to the program. So I'm doing what exactly what my family was built for, confronting someone geographically far away, knowing that they're going to hear about it, never speaking about it again. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's nothing funnier than your uncle or your brother, well, you're basically his uncle, but you're like a guy with a large age gap in your family just going like, you ain't getting enough pussy. 
<laughs> oh yeah, there's nothing better. I w- it was uh, it's the favorite one. Me, was a bunch I fucked of- that guy. I fucked this face, <clears throat> girl. Is that it? I was at an extended family family party, and one of the cousins had too many martinis, and said, too, "By the too many martinis, <laughs> you like that? Was that intentional? That was intentional. That's fucking good. Isn't anyway. that good? That is not mine. I've heard that other places, but I I took it." That's good. Steel. It's mine. Oh, you salt bay. Go I'm John. Amy Schumer. I'm salt. I'm the salt bay thief. That's your. That's your salt. I'm doing that with. <laughs> but it's on Hitler's steak. That's my favorite thing about salt bay. Is that it's like, ooh, look, he's doing his little salt thing. Who's eating it? Pol Pot. Yeah, no, that's who's that steak? <laughs> who's that steak for? Replace Joseph the dead Stalin. Kid. Yeah, it was Mao Zedong literally in the middle of being like, is there any way we could kill 11 million people in a year? You know what I really want? A well salted piece of beef. He's he's all right. So here's what I like about Salt Bay is he's one of the first guys to be like, uh, Abu Dhabi. Yeah, that's oh, my yeah. main thing is Abu Dhabi. Yeah, here's when I first knew Salt Bay was a piece of shit. Started seeing if you are a non fighter and you're in UFC promotional material, you're a fucking piece of shit. What a beautiful observation. Write that down and do that as stand up comedy. It's, yeah, literally, if it's like, if whatever product, oh my God, that's even the celebrities that show up, unless that's you're the a fascist, thing. there's the fucking Juanato Moicano, Moicano just won his fight against uh, Benoit Saint Denis. He was in France and he uh, called out Macron for a fight. Oh. And then oh, he no. said, democracy is a fallacy, Bolsonaro forever. Oh, that was his post-fight no. speech. And more and than a... once now, he's basically been like, <laughs> they were like, oh, really good choke out. And then he goes like, every country on the planet should be militarized by the police. And they're like, who do you want to fight? And he's like, a left wing guy. <laughs> <laughs> like here's my problem like the concept of sharing <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah a kindergarten uh, teacher that tells you to just be nice uh oh my god he just called out the concept of humanity let me tell you who i'm gonna meet in the octagon the idea of treating your neighbor as yourself i'm putting him in yeah, a triangle exactly. christianity <laughs> as a concept yeah not not as, as a system of control though that's me Dylan, by the way, didn't realize that UFC theater is now in his house, cheating, and his wife is cheating on Dylan with him. But here's the thing that that UFC fighter doesn't know: that's Dylan's secret kink. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to fudge pack you while you pack my wife. No, Triple packed. Yeah, but when he says fudge pack, he literally means patch, pack some literal fudge for him to take home. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a little. I do it. It's like a little birthday party. You have sex exactly. with my wife, yeah. and then I give you a gift bag. It is fucked we don't get loot bags anymore i said this since i was about 10 or 11 when the loot bag stopped at the birthday party that should be a traditional thing you show up at someone's party you get a loot bag and it reflects after the age of 20 it reflects that person's age you know what i mean 36 it's a bunch of broken dreams 39 it's a workout (laughs) plan 40 it's a undue sense of confidence about one's opinions you know what i mean do you think that I do think. But you, you never were at a party with someone, and this is a very specific type of person, who is like throwing a party but going to be an excellent mother later on, who like yeah. had ironic loot bags. I've never had an ironic loot bag. There was like a bag. hangover cure in them. They're like Tums or something, where it's like, oh, wow, I've you're going to be like an excellent parent. I've never been to any of those parties. I've been to a lot of parties where you're like, I probably should get some indigestives after this because I don't know what they think sangria is, but it doesn't have this much bourbon in it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it is so specific, but it's like when, you know, when women start thinking they're old at 25, like I'm a woman, I'm 25 now. And of course. Then there was like a bunch of parties around then where it was like, we went there and I was like a piece of shit. So I was like... I fucking, I got fucking, I'm fucking got chewing tobacco in my asshole, and I'm smoking two cigarettes at once. Wow! And then the, and then these girls were like, "Oh, here's a loot bag with like, it's got like, um, one of them had like a Pepto Bismol and like a tiny Pepto Bismol and um, like a Gatorade. It was like, oh, for tomorrow. And I was like, I, just, I took a shit in your dryer. I mean, just to show the different levels of parties we were going to. One of my uh, roommates at one point did throw a dinner party. I just remembered this. Threw a dinner party, 
and said specifically, John, you can't come. It's going to be like a fun, classy affair, just ladies. And I came back. I went and did spots. This was in Montreal. I came back, and they had all just done a bunch of blow and never ate any of the food they made. And I was like, this isn't a classy party. Just because like, she was like, yeah, it's classy. There were plates. And I'm like, no, classy would be like it's done at 11 and you guys discussed politics in a, ta- a tone of a salon. What you did is just did a bunch of class A's around only one gender. By the way, that's just that's just what most of the parties in my university was, was a, to paraphrase Jim Jeffries, doing drugs with a bunch of men discussing where women might be. <laughs> hey, man. There's nothing better than a fucking all dudes piss party. Uh, okay, so here's Salt Bay. Grows up in poverty. So here's my favorite thing about him is that he is essentially he's a handsome little boy, and he does the fucking salt thing. His, it's in 2017. Meme gets shared everywhere. He goes mega viral. This is the thing. I always thought that he became famous after this. Like he became uh, essentially a famous. Like, I thought the expensive restaurants happened after this, but they were before. Uh, He had some restaurants in Turkey that were actually super affordable. But then, this is very key about him, as soon as people like the food and the presentation, because he's the fucking, he makes a point to be the table guy. That's where this shit comes from. Yeah. He makes a point to be the guy who does the presentation of the table. Basically, if you get a steak, he cuts it and does a bunch of bullshit and then fucking does the salt shit. At your table, um, and the prices go up tenfold within a year. It literally goes from three people could eat a three course meal for like seventy five dollars total with coffees to like seven hundred and fifty bucks in a year. But people still like the presentation. They still like the food. He does the meme. He's a cutie patootie. He does the fucking salt thing, and it gets shared everywhere. I love it. It is a perfect social media thing because he's a handsome guy doing a silly thing some people love it and then all, some of the comments are why are this going why is this going viral is this what the world has come to all this bullshit yeah it, what's so funny about that is yeah he's very much one of those guys that it, i think people probably learned this is based off of me realizing he was a businessman before the meme is people realizing engagement is what drives it because it's also he was he was a meme in the 2010s which literally which people realized later it's like oh all those hell, hell, uh, hate comments are what spurned him forward because the algorithm doesn't know emotion. It's like people like people are engaging with this. Let us continue the engagement party. This is a Hawk Tua thing where it is a Hawk Tua, Tua thing. girl could could if, if, if it's like Salt Bay, but Salt Bay is interesting because it's kind of like it's, it's a lot like given that it's a dude doing a presentation at the table and he owns these restaurants. It is like one. Uh, it's like a comedian going viral. And then, the, and then he has a direct way to make money from him going viral. But he Correct. is very What's much like, it's like a weird thing that goes viral that then he monetizes. So this is like, as we go throughout the story and what, what truly ruins him isn't just being a piece of shit in his shitty business practices. It's one specific incident at the World Cup that you've probably seen, but. I haven't. I haven't seen it. I literally know nothing right. about this That's man. Great. I'm excited. That's so I good that you haven't seen it. I'm trying to find, no I was trying idea. to find raw video of it, but. Sorry, John. So I just want to say this, and this is a point that I want to flash up because it's showing that Dylan's not only he's not only a beast in the sheets, he's also a beast in the library. Because your point about Hawk Tua v Salt Bay is very interesting, in that Hawk Tua is doing a very smart thing, in that she's basically continually putting herself in situations where she just reacts to people reacting to her like her all of her podcasts with whitney cummings is whitney being like is there a way that you could hold this talisman and these witch doctors could st- steal your spirit and she's like ah, i don't really like talismans because my granny doesn't believe in that sort of stuff and also i've signed a deal where i actually own your company and it's just like it's the most <laughs> fascinating thing of here is the thing with just an average american hustler is they'll just hustle and they will they'll go for it you know what i mean like in the way that you can be blackout drunk in the UK and everyone's like, yeah, I've been blackout drunk before. You could be nakedly, um, you could be like nakedly and adversarially competitive to get to the top. And everyone in America's like, yeah, I've tried that too. Go nuts. You know what I mean? So here's the thing is Hawk Tua can do it and ride that meme success because A, 
she there's no like price point you see rise it's just like she has a podcast her like all of that stuff is quiet so she remains her veneer of like just being an internet figure as opposed to whatever happens with salt bay immediately he's created this situation where he was a person of the people you can get steak for 75 dollars. she's a fun meme and he's already like it's a hundred percent more expensive that's like that's so nakedly like what side are you on the no, cheap this was buck. before he was this is before he was uh a meme that's even better. It's even better because it's like, oh, you can you see you see the fatal flaw and the and the fall coming. Go ahead. So he's literally charging seven hundred fifty bucks for a steak and no, just because he does this and no one no, knows who the fuck people. he is. So th- it's like seven fifty for three people at one of these super fancy places. With that's him actually doing pr- fucking backflips and the steak comes out of his armpits or whatever. Like that's that's not that's shitty, but it's not like it's it's not near where it gets. That's true, like and it's also one of those nuts. And it's also one of those things where this, you know, food culture. There are restaurants like this is this is what's people's passion and stuff like that. They don't go to concerts. They go to these crazy restaurants. They spend this money and get this amazing food. It's like three people for seven hundred bucks. It's a. I wouldn't do it, but I get it. Okay, so that's where it starts. Then the fucking tiki ti, ti 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 ti. And here's the thing: he's got the very thing where it's like, even though the meme is dumb, whatever, everyone can see this guy came from nothing. It is good that this guy has money. I have a question right? for you. What's up, buddy? I only All like right, meat. Continue. I'm on the carnivore diet. Whoa, Ozzy. Easy, buddy. Anyone who eats vegetables is actually eating chemicals that kill them. That's how vegetables protect themselves. <laughs> buddy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's pilled. Oh, he's black pilled. <laughs> Not even red. He went all the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He thinks red pills for fucking poon tank pie. You do. You are the difference between red pill and black pill. That's how much I like reading the comments on YouTube. <laughs> no, I had never heard of that. Red pill, you want to convert. Black pill, you want to kill the people that stand against you. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, yeah. that's intense. It's a bit of an escalation. <laughs> all right, John. Question about Salt Bay. Here's my question about Salt Bay. So it's seven fifty for three people meme happens how quickly do the prices change after the meme that's what i want to know so there's no all right so there there is for sure a record of that that i have not taken good but this is very key everyone is fine with this because this guy's story is like he truly is i came from nothing he worked for everything he had he was just driven by an And like all the people who came from nothing and then whatever, he is driven by like a psychotic need for fame. Yeah, I assume that a person who may or may not be his father yelled, die, motherfucker, one too many times directly in his face. (laughs) (laughs) And and now we are all just subjected to an abject asshole. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's he's fully like, and this has happened more than once. Flirt with the microphone, Dylan. He has like basically posted a look how sick my life is instagram post where he's like serving a dictator whose citizens are actively starving to death a big steak and then the all the comments are how dare you eat this steak while we all starve and salt is like check it out another meal oh my god so wait, so we that did this happens a- all the time. But people, most of the world isn't really aware of how weird this dude is getting until this is the, f- the World I've, Cup. So okay, so what happens at the world? Like this is fucking insane. So, like, I'm going to try and set this up while also I'm going to try and put this child down and set this up, and you're going to hear screaming. Maybe one moment. I assume you'll be the one screaming because of how intense the story is. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, here we go. You just got alpha so, by your baby. <laughs> Yeah, that's what they call. Yeah. I will not be cucked by my baby. Um, yeah. Oh man, I can't believe so this. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, this is what this is the first one. Um, I will not share the audio. All right. So here's the first one. This is, <laughs> this is they're very key. Someone just won the World Cup. This happens once every four years. So I would say the stakes are. Everyone in the, every country is really good at soccer, essentially. All European countries. Obviously, winning the World Cup is absolutely huge. Mm-hmm. Usually, an athlete's prime, even an elite athlete, their prime is four years long. So, all the people that have won this, they're winning it for their country. Uh, this is their dream. And this 
most likely is the only time they're going to be able to play at this level in their lives. They don't know that, but it's implied. And here, this is two men on the team holding the cup. All right. Okay. Salt Bay grabs the cup. There's no reason for him to be on the side. He's doing his signature Salt Bay pose. Perfect. That's what did the first I just one. There's more? I'm already <laughs> deeply uncomfortable. I'm also deeply uncomfortable by the things you're being recommended on TikTok. Go ahead. Oh, that's just a gen this is just a general TikTok account. No login. Don't lie to me, Dylan. We all know your you we all know your user name is. This is this still login. on the TikTok uh page here? It is still on the all TikTok right. page. Take it off. All right. Okay. So, so that's his here's first the, move. Here's Couple the things Salt I have to say. Here's the other one. Sorry. Comments on that one first. Because the other thing you don't see that I didn't find a video good enough was the guy's kid tries to touch the trophy and Salt, Salt Bay stops the kid. He's like, I was about to say that was exactly what I was about to point out, which is I really enjoyed the guy who's almost the size of the baby knocking the kid's hand out of the way to be like, how many followers do you have on Facebook? Oh, dude. And he's like, all the comments on all his videos now, it'll just be him doing something like pull-ups and it'll be like, you are short. <laughs> oh, great. I was about People to here's fully the thing that, hate him now. Here's the thing that everyone needs to remember. The circular sunglass, that is the big, that is up there with someone saying my way is my favorite song fucking run they are an asshole well in his defense he is a turkish man so you can't you got to adjust i don't Different have to adjust john i don't have that's to like adjust. my my eureka moment when i did a gig in spain and realized that oh what all that i've been taught is a douchebag is just a spanish person yeah it's just I a mean, spanish I, guy i'm gonna extend this to your mainland european man yes like it's just yeah, this it's guy just with English people who are like, "What are you doing?" Oh, it's butter. I put it on my nope. Boil yeah. it. Yeah, boil uh, it. You fucking sycophant shit. Why is that man wearing a loose fitted shirt? Well, because it's warm yeah. where he lives. You're not supposed to be warm where you live. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? I'm heating my house. Put a sweater on, bitch. Yeah. Okay. Here's the other thing I just want to say. What okay. do you mean he does it again? No, this is, this is, all right, so this is the one that caught everyone's attention. I think stopping the baby from touching the World Cup while you do your signature pose. Also, fuck, I couldn't find raw video of it, but he does at one point literally take the World Cup country, the World Cup trophy. Oh, keep in mind, he is not friends with any of these people. He's just I, on the is, sideline for some reason. This is what I was about to ask, because I was like, is he have ties to Argentina through, like, steak or something? Like, what I would assume is, no. like, is... He just, he just is a... He's just, uh, what's it called? He has restaurants all over the world, blah, 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 but mostly he just literally saw an a opportunity rich he's a rich for guy. the most watched yeah. moment on television and wanted to do the Salt Bay pose on the World Cup. All right, hit this video. I assume Messi attacks. I really hope Messi's the I'll kick it. Oh my god. So you can see he gets a picture, a quick picture with Messi. All right, cool. That's nice. And then he keeps on bugging him. Wait, what? Yeah, he's like grabbing look at he's he holding grabs his him. arm. He's holding onto his arm. He's turning him. What and this is like a like Lionel Messi is widely basically rumored to be just an autistic man who's like zoned ADHD zoned in on soccer. There you go. He's holding the World Cup. This is great. He kisses the World Cup alone. No, he takes yeah, it from the dude yeah, who actually won the game. That baby's hands might be sticky. This is very, okay. Here's the thing with Lionel Messi, which I think is the best thing in the entire world, is he basically lived his entire life to be like, I will bring the World Cup back to Argentina. Or I will murder my own family. And the entire country mm -hmm. was like, oh, thank you so much for clarifying that murdering your own family thing, because we were going to do that if you didn't. And then he did it. And now you just, I've never seen a man just more like, yeah, I'll do whatever I want. I, I'm fine now. I've done oh, it. Oh, he signed that fucking crazy deal with Abu Dhabi where it's like, post about us once a month and we'll give you a kabillion de dollars. Yeah, it's like. Also kind of yeah, had to make up with Salt Bay because Salt Bay is one of the fucking people that just has a restaurant in Abu Dhabi. Because Abu Dhabi's bad. <laughs> can you imagine? I, I guarantee whoever, the, I can never remember who the particular ruler of Abu Dhabi is, but I guarantee he's just like, mm -hmm. I need to get better friends. Imagine he's like, who are your bros? Oh, Dana White, Salt Bay, 
Lionel Messi. That sounds like a horrible dinner party. It is. No one, either no one is talking or everyone is talking and no one is listening. <laughs> salt Bay guarantee is just sitting there until he can do a salt thing. I guarantee Salt Bay is not at the table. He has a reason to get up and he leaves. I also want to point out the person who rules Abu Dhabi literally owns slaves. And out of those four people, I would go, he's the one I like off the bat of everything I know about. I like him the best. <laughs> yeah, he's into slavery. He likes slavery. And these other guys are like, yeah, sure. I mean, I'll. But anyway, here. All right. There's so a difference Salt Bay- between. Here's the thing with Dana White. I guarantee that he's just like, you want to know why I'm friends with this guy? It's because he owns people. Oh, dude, Dana White. Also, like, which I really like. So, like, because up until the World Cup thing, everyone's like, yeah, he's a cheesy loser. But, like, kind of if you're going to Salt Bay's fucking restaurant, you're an influencer going because you have money and you want the post. It's a show of wealth. Or, like, you're just no, you're just a fucking idiot. Like, you know... Dude, there's, like a, there's a 55 pound Heineken on the menu. It's 55 pounds for one Heineken. This I, isn't like a fucking beer we make in house. It's like, yeah, we, we cracked a fucking two for a Heineken. Here's one of them. That'll be 110 Canadian dollars. I would pay so much money to watch an English person just see that. Like a person from Manchester, I assume smoke would start coming out of their ears. Regular person, but he his restaurant is in London. It's one of the worst rated restaurants in London. Two and a half stars. Oh my god! It, you know how difficult because they that- just fucking do the salt bay shit steaks, which gold steaks are just like yeah, you get that gold foil that's like three pounds or six bucks, and you put it on a fucking steak to make it look like it's gold, but it's just a fucking steak. I mean, people are trash. I gotta tell you, like the thing that people oh, like, dude, it's it's for it's for trash with money. Some food blogger goes there and gets a two thousand dollar steak, and they just give him a raw steak. <laughs> I hope it was on purpose. I hope they were like that guy reviews for Eater, and he was like, "Give him the raw." What? No, That's bad. Give him the raw. Suck my yeah. dick. Do you want to know the thing that makes me believe that Quentin Tarantino is going to be a real handful personality wise? Who? Quentin Tarantino. He was asked. Quentin what, Tarantino, bu- handful personality. I mean, yeah. What would re- make you think that? Get ready for this answer. This answer okay. sends shudders down my spine. Does your mom, did you buy your mom a house? No. She, I showed her my first script and she said, this isn't very good. And I said, you will never get a house from me when I am famous. And I've held to that. Wow. And I'm like, wow, Quentin, I cannot wait to hear what you're like when you go through your eventual divorce. Because it's going to be fucking wicked. Like, it's going to be like, let me tell you who's to blame for that. People that are both trans and people that are against trans. I'm against both of them. And I have a new movie called I Don't Like Anybody. It is eight <laughs> hours long, and it's just Uma Thurman walking barefoot through different things. Yeah, well, I Mud. say the N-word. Well, I, yeah, well, I make Samuel L. Jackson say the N-word to me, and I go, that's my word now. And then Chevy Chase and Richard Pryor <laughs> oh, That's my word for me. <laughs> yeah, that's my word for you. And it's Samuel L. Jackson saying it to a mirror, and then Quentin Tarantino in the background going, ha, 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 and he's on a toilet. So my favorite thing about when... Obviously, someone like this is proven to be an asshole, and there's a flashpoint where everyone has to make their v- YouTube video about how he's an asshole. Go ahead. Is that there's? It's kind of like uh, sweeping the ocean floor. You're gonna get a lot of fish, but also there's gonna be some rocks, just some stuff where it's like, yeah. But the thing is, they mention the rocks. Here's here's some of the rocks. They're like, yeah, and then he yelled at someone for fucking up, and like said they were gonna kill them. I'm like, that's just regular kitchen abuse. That's just being in the kitchen, guys. That's just a, that's yeah. just a man who works in the service industry. Yeah, of course. He's he he's he has sunglasses on. He never takes a picture without the sunglasses on. He's in the he has forty hundred is forty eight million bajillion hundreds of the same V neck that hasn't been cool in twelve years. He's gonna yell, "I'm gonna kill you" if someone fucks up even a bit at his restaurant where a steak is fifteen thousand dollars and you don't need to cook it well. What are the other restaurants? Like, what are the other? Oh, some of the employees were on drugs. Yeah, man, it's a kitchen. You're probably lucky that some of the employees weren't putting drugs in the food. Oh yeah, I mean, I have no idea. 
It's a fine dining restaurant, but it's like the worst reviewed. Anytime one of these restaurants open, I think he had like a burger place that opened because he was like, oh, maybe I'll fucking sell a burger for $800 million. And it like opened and closed in like a week in New York. Uh, the Chicago one got closed for uh, health code violations. I mean, I know that that was just like someone at Chicago City Hall was like, hey, Dwayne, there's a guy with a goatee who's just opened a restaurant. In fucking Chicago? What is this? Fucking Manhattan? And then they went down and just beat him up. Yeah. That's closed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking Turkish guy opening a restaurant. Fuck that. What? what the fuck? We got to do something about this immigration from Indiana. That's the other thing that's very fun about the United States that I've noticed very recently is um, the word immigration has been in the news too much, and now they're applying it to different states, which I think is so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, yeah. I'm yeah, an immigrant just, from where? Florida. Literally, I just, we got to do something about the immigration from California to New Mexico. You guys are affecting the area. And I was just like, you can't, man. It's the, it's the same country. There's no border yeah, check. You don't need a passport. Uh, yeah, like I, I drove straight here in a straight line from my house in California to this um, Native Reserve Casino right here in New Mexico. And let me just say, by the candor of way you're speaking, I don't think you are aware of who owns this place. <laughs> uh, he also, Salt Bay does... Um, posts a picture of him dressed up as Fidel Castro and goes R.I.P. And then two days later, he was opening a restaurant in Miami. I'm going to say this right now. I have never had more respect for Salt Bay in my entire life where he was like, mm. I know how I honor the de a dead man who is, whose entire ideology was against how I have money. I'll dress up exactly like him and then I will open a, a restaurant and charge all the people that hate him in the city that they built to hate him. <laughs> eight hundred dollars for each steak <laughs> dude there's one bill he posts he because he posts huge bills there's like a bill in abu dhabi that was like a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars and it was just like fucking it was like a steak and some drinks but the people that are fucking buying this shit are it's like conor mcgregor is one of the big customers and it's like yeah take all conor oh. mcgregor's money who gives an ass full of piss about conor mcgregor can i just say this about conor mcgregor i have yes. never seen a man look so muscular with such an alcoholic face like it is so, it Dude, is he's the best it's the best i gotta tell you because i've never i i was 50 50 him as a fighter i'm a hundred percent in for him living the rick flair gimmick to the point where he's like oh i'm being oh, yeah. rick flair in his 70s and i'll be in my 30s and i'm like this <laughs> this is what he Here's bought what a, I like about Conor McGregor is that every other yacht, pro a fighter gets fat afterwards, and he <laughs> is not getting fat. He's just doing the amount of steroids he needs to maintain his body type while living booze. There's a fucking live stream where he has 12 tall cans of his own beer and just does a bunch of gack, and it's like... Man, are you talking about say, the this is my problem, is people are like, can you believe what's happening with Conor? I'm like, yes, yeah. you would do yeah. the same thing. I completely agree with you that when I read that he bought a Lamborghini yacht that just trails his other yeah. yacht because sometimes he just needs to get away from his family. And I'm just like, wait, you can't get away from your family <laughs> on a 300 foot yacht. And you're like, which also no. means uh, which sometimes he has a backup yacht with just women waiting. Yeah. Like he probably is like his wife your... must have a cuckold fetish at this point. I think his wife has a like. I just put everything in my name. He doesn't know what a bank is fetish. I think is what she like. You look at yeah. her face and that is the face of someone that was like, we were so poor and we're not going back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can have 80 beers and cheat on me. I've invested all of the money. Like, you know what I mean? Like she, you see like his family and she just has the vibe of like, yeah, do whatever the fuck you want. I don't fucking care. Like, yeah. Okay, great. We don't, yeah, we don't live in a, we don't live in a wet box in Dublin city. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Oh, he cheats on you. Yeah. I got four kids and everything's in my name. You can have sex with my sister. I don't give a shit. I'm going to kill him <laughs> in his sleep in 10 years and make it look like an overdose. Welcome to hell. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Salt Bay is going to be one of those guys. It's so funny. We're like liver King now is off of a cliff. Like he got caught doing something. Oh no, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, what? no, 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 no. You don't know that Liver King's back and he's now done the classic. He's like trumping it where he's just ignoring it. No, I didn't do that. I didn't admit to that. Prime. Like, it's really fun. Uh, No, but I mean, like, I looked up. So I've looked up the amount of people that like Liver King posts and everything because it's, oh, it's so he's sponsoring his own posts and oh. no one cares. Like, he's like getting the oh, amount of no. like. He's not getting the amount of likes we get on our posts, but like 
he's getting the amount of likes we would get if we just sponsored our posts the same way. So <sighs> no one cares about Liver King. Salt Bay, on the other hand, even when people are making these like Salt Bay's fucking done videos, they have to admit that he's like he's on <laughs> this is what they say. He's only gaining like three hundred thousand the uh, not even views but like 300,000 new subscribers a year for the last couple like of years that. and it's like yeah he's got 50 million he'll be okay he's fine probably he's probably fine but here's the, the next thing i know people. it's bo- it def- oh no Dylan. it's definitely bothering him there's no way oh 100% that that guy it's bothering is not him looking at th- i can't hear you cuz my headphones are off and i broke them he's not looking at the number i don't know what you said but it was probably rude he, there is no way he's not looking at that number every day just like damn it Get me 300 people and get them to sign. Sign up right now. 100% it's bothering him. I'm just saying that he's in such a different position than the Liver King because the Liver King had to like kind of... And Liver King, Hawk to a Girl, he has such a like different position than them because Liver King had to invent a way to give him money and so does Hawk to a girl versus Salt Bay. It was like always there. So he mm. he may fall in a way that he's going to be bothered by it. But in a very real way, he's always going to be your rich piece of shit because it'll always be like, like if Abu Dhabi is like the richer Las Vegas, he'll always be the fucking restaurant people go to. It's like, yeah, you go to Abu Dhabi, you do all these things. And one of the things you do is you fucking get some shitty salt sprinkled on a steak by a weird guy. I mean, it's just also one of those things. You you make a great point. Is yeah, like it's one of those things. You go. I've been to Vegas enough times now where you're like, oh fuck, there's the guy from Extreme Kitchens, three restaurants that he's still getting a royalty from. Yeah, like it's in the end is like, what is Salt Bay doing with the food? Probably nothing. He's probably collecting a royalty from each of the restaurants and is basically now just like a, he's a corporate proprietor, a, a food distribution source. Like it's like he's so removed from it. Mm-hmm. Like, it reminds me of like Trump hotels, where Trump hotels. We're basically given directives, and then they just do it, and then everyone's like, this place sucks, but it has the fucking brand name of Trump, so it's like, yeah, people are going to go there. Yeah, it's very... I mean, there was... Do you remember the, the whole thing around the Trump building in Toronto that people were like, I'm going to boycott it? And it's like, I don't think you will. I think you'll just go to that building, and people did. That's my favorite. I, I love the naked, the elaborate and naked, but never going to fulfill it boycott. I'm never going to a Salt Bay restaurant again. If you're in Abu Dhabi and you've got $800,000, yeah, you are. I mean, $800,000? Hell yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Well, we all know that Dylan is definitely going to Abu Dhabi. As soon as, he, as, soon as his kids are grown, he's going le- to burn his house down. He's going to go immediately to Abu Dhabi, and he's going to start gambling. Weirdly, I don't know why yeah, he chose Abu Dhabi. Yeah, I want to go to gambling. Las Vegas, but more evil somehow. Yeah, I want to go to Las Vegas, but I want to make sure that like people are definitely dying. Yeah, exactly. Oh, what? these? This was built by loan sharks because... A father of two gambled too much. I want to go to a place where uh, it's built by dictators because they love slaves. Here's my question, Dylan. How, like if you, I put you in Vegas for five days, consequence free. I'm assuming you're sleeping for three days. You're having two hamburgers. You're taking the biggest, longest, undisturbed shit. Then you're just flying back to Canada. Like it's one of those things where it's like, you're a father of two. What are you going to do? I'm going to sleep in this quiet room for three days. What are you fucking talking about, bro? Although I will say this, we stayed in the MGM and it was like a cell. I was like, what are you oh, supposed yeah, the- to do in here? It's like a fucking cell. It's it's built for like, you just sleep here, right? And it's like, if you want anything but a cell block, then you have to fucking pay out the ass. And it's like, I don't. You got to look at the different hotels and stuff. Like that. The thing that I was turned on to, and it's such a good move, is... You don't buy directly from the hotel. You just go on to Expedia because you go in the hotel and they're like, it's 300 bucks. You go on to Expedia and they're like, you want this hotel for like, we'll give you 10 bucks. <laughs> oh, I cut out again. You fucking asshole. You son of a bitch. I fucking hate this shit. All right. There now you go. we're done now. All Goodbye. right, guys. Dylan, Dylan's going to put his kid to bed and then he's going to eat four steaks because guys, we're here to announce Dylan is now carnivore diet proponent carnivore buddy uh i think our next episode should be i think i want to draft top five people who was would have had their career ruined by having a podcast yeah because and this is something uh a point not pioneered by myself 
But like, there's a reason stand-up comedians were so great in the '90s and 2000s because podcasts did not exist, and you didn't have to know. Like, Burt Kreischer and Andrew Schultz would have totally been remembered differently if they could have focused who they are on stage. Because like, they're good on stage, but then obviously on podcasts, maybe they can come off a bit obnoxious. If they just didn't have to be who they were on podcasts, then maybe people would like them a lot more. I'm gonna. I have some big arguments. I'm also gonna put out this preposition. Only one wrestler. It only. We can only have one professional wrestler because oh, you okay, could do fucking sure. five wrestlers. No, I can do five wrestlers off the top of my head. <laughs> so one wrestler. Exactly. All right. I'm gonna go. This How about baby this? We is do being ignorant. Goodbye. Go. All right. I see you later. Bye.